So this video was going to be about modeling a simple pumpkin, but as I tested it out, I found quite a few ways to go about it. And I think each method is worth exploring since you all want to make pumpkins and there are no other videos teaching you how. In my opinion, the best way is a combination of polymodeling and sculpting, because sculpting lets you enable radial symmetry, but each method has its pros and cons. Here's a summary of what we'll cover. The first way is with a displacement modifier, which handles all of these ridges for us. Second, we'll have the screw modifier, and that lets us make this shape with only the profile. Third, we'll use an array modifier, so we can focus on one segment of the pumpkin and copy it around to create the full shape. Fourth is using curves, which is a fun way to make variations in shape. Fifth, we'll do basic poly modeling, which is a great way to make a nice clean model. And sixth, we'll hop into sculpting mode to experience the power of radial symmetry. All right, let's get started. So we're using Blender 2.93 for this one, and I'm just gonna get started with the displacement method. So first thing we have to do, just like most of these, we're gonna actually start off with a very basic poly model shape. I'm just gonna start off with a plane right here, and I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. I'm just gonna hit Control-4 to do that and hop into edit mode with tab. So I'm just gonna look from the front and extrude this upward like that. Scale it in just on everything but the Z axis right there. And in face select mode, I'm just gonna select the top and the bottom right here and inset those with I like that. And then using X-ray mode for this, I'm gonna scale that on the Z axis right here just to pull it in a little. Add a loop cut with control R and scale that out. So here you can see we have a very basic pumpkin shape now. I'm gonna keep going to create the stem. So in face select mode, just gonna select that top one, hit N to open up the side panel right here and turn the mean crease all the way up like that. You can see it's sharp now and extrude that up slightly and then turn this one all the way down. So that one is smooth now. And this is just gonna be the stem. So I'm gonna inset that like that extrude it upward, extrude it again, and scale it out just a little. And then I'll inset a little more just so it's a little sharp at the top. This is what we have right now. Next, we'll add the displacement modifier right here. And you can see it's getting all wonky. So I'm just gonna turn the strength down to 0.1 and I want the mid-level to only push outward. So I'm just gonna turn the mid-level all the way down to zero. We can add a new texture right here. I'm just going to name this ridges. We can click this button to go to the texture tab down here. I'm going to change this type to blend and down here change this from linear to radial. So you can see this is the shape of our texture right now and you can see what it's doing if you look from the top. The black is not pushing out at all and uh, as it gets more white it pushes out more. So it's kind of creating this almost like a snail shell type shape right here. But if we go down to colors and color ramp, you can see it gives us the option to change these around. So basically what we're going to do is create more flags and just reposition them. I only want there to be black and white flags for this one. So I'm going to change this to constant because this is the easiest way to do it that I found. And you just want to select the one all the way to the right and pull it a little closer and click this plus button. You can see it'll add a black one and we can move that over all the way to the right click plus again, and you can see it's just basically going to alternate black and white. And however many ridges you want your pumpkin to have, you want to place that many white flags. So you can see we have three right now, and I'm just gonna do this until we have 10 of them. I created 10 of those, I believe. I might've lost count, I don't know. And then I just placed a black one at the very end. So I'm just gonna switch this back from constant I'm going to set it to ease. And you can see it's not really spaced correctly. We can click this arrow right here and distribute stops evenly like that. And this is getting pretty close to what we want, but you can see the stem is definitely displacing too much. So if you want to change that, you can add a vertex group right here. You go to object data properties and click the plus. This will add a new vertex group. We can change this to ridges. It doesn't really matter what the name is. You just want to make sure that you select the same name down here and you can see everything will go away. What we have to do is hop into weight painting mode. So I'm just gonna select this and hit control tab, and weight paint right here. And if you wanna know the spots that you're actually editing, you can turn on wireframe right here, just so we don't have to touch each vertex. You can go up to active tool and workspace settings, this one at the very top, 
go down to symmetry. I'm going to turn this off and turn on mirror X and Y right here. You can see now it's going to mirror that selection on the X and the Y axis right there. So we only have to select like a quarter of our mesh basically. So I'll just make sure that this is maximum and then I'll turn the strength down a little and we can just paint where we want it to actually be displacing. Okay, and I think that's pretty good. Then we can go back into object mode and turn off wireframe. And there's our pumpkin. You could also add another displacement if you want, just to add some different shapes. Just want to make sure that you turn color ramp off for this one. And you don't want the strength to be too high. We can shade that smooth. And it looks a little more real now, just to have some irregularities. But this step is completely optional. So one of the cool things about using the displacement modifier is that it's completely procedural. If you want to add more ridges, you totally can. But the downside is that you don't get the flexibility of just being able to push and pull points around. You are limited in that way, but you could always do a combination of poly modeling and the displacement modifiers. All right, next we can talk about the screw modifier. So to get started, I'm just going to add a plane and tab into edit mode. I'm going to make sure that I'm in vertex select for this, select everything and hit M and I'm going to merge that at the center. So it's going to create a single vertex right here. We can basically just start uh, drawing the profile of our pumpkin right here. If you want to make sure that you're snapping to the center line right here, you can just go up here to snapping options and turn on absolute grid snap right there. And then when you're moving this around, you can just hit control and it will snap to the grid like that. So we know it's in the very center. Now we can add the screw modifier right here. And you can see it's basically just going to spin all the way around. Obviously we can also smooth this out too with another subdivision surface modifier. I'm just gonna hit control four for that and move that to the top. So it's basically smoothing out the line before the screw modifier touches it. And if we want, we can edit this to make it look however we want. Right now it looks a little Apple-like. So one of the upsides of this is it's really fast, like you saw how fast I did it. One of the downsides is you can't really create ridges with this method, not this method alone anyway. If you wanted, you could add a displacement modifier, just like we did in the last one, and we already have the ridges one right here, so we could do that if we want some ridges. You can also change the resolution of this, so we could set these to something higher, like 64, and you can see now it has higher resolution. One other downside is that when you're editing this, you can't create sharp edges if it's just a single vertex. So instead, if you wanted this to be sharp, you could add another spot in right here, another point, and hit G twice to slide it along the edge until it's a little closer, and it'll make it a little sharper like that. Let's move on to the array. For this one, I'm going to add in a circle. And when you create that, you'll see we have this little dialog in the corner. We can create as many vertices as we want, any, as many segments. I'm just going to make this 12 so we can have 12 different ridges. So I just want to rotate this until we have a flat spot in the front right here. Um, and the easy way to do that is just know how many ridges you have. So we have 12 right here. You just double that. Um, so I'm going to do 360 divided by whatever double the ridges you have is. So in this case, it's 24. And that's pretty much it. So if you had six ridges, you would just do 360 divided by 12. And if you had eight, you would do 360 divided by 16. When you do that, you just want to control A and apply the rotation right there. So now I'm going to go into edit mode, just select all of these, hit E to extrude, and then S to scale. I'm just going to scale that inward slightly like this. Hit three to select faces, and just select this front face right here and hit control I to invert the selection. And I'm just gonna delete every other face like that. So we just have this one right here. So now we should set up our array modifier. We're going to want to add in an empty to control this. And then select your mesh right here. Under modifiers, add an array modifier. We don't wanna use relative offset, we wanna use object offset. And we can select the object that we just made, that empty. And we know we want 12 ridges. So for the count, I'm just gonna put 12 like that. Now we just want to rotate this on the z-axis until it loops around perfectly. So the easy way to do that is for the z-rotation, we can do uh, 360 divided by however many ridges we have, so 12. And you can see when we add our subdivision surface modifier, um, none of these are connected. So we need to click this merge button 
for the array modifier to work. And if we drop down, you can see there's also a first and last connect right here. You want to select that too, or else you're going to have that gap right here. All right, now we can go into edit mode and start editing this. And we only have to edit this one ridge, but there is one thing that makes it a little tricky. And that's when you move it far away or too close, it either overlaps or disconnects. So the easiest way I found to edit like this is make sure your 3D cursor is in the center. If it's not in the center, you can hit Shift S, cursor to world origin like that, and then hit period. Do you wanna change your pivot point to 3D cursor like that? So now when you select this and scale, it'll scale from the center. So whenever you want to move something away, you wanna scale it instead. So I'm just gonna start editing this now. I'm gonna hit three to look from the side. I'll just select that, move it up. I'm gonna extrude that and bring that up on the Z axis. And again, when you move it away, you want to scale it, but I'm going to hit shift Z so it's not moving on the Z axis like that. It's just scaling away. Extrude it up again, extrude it in by scaling, shift Z. Extrude, scale, shift Z. Scale that down like this. And I'm just going to box select to bring these out. Scale, shift Z. So now we can model this ridge however we want to. So um, you could do like a loop cut with shift R like this and just move that out right here. Um, or you could bring it in and turn the mean crease up so that it's a little sharper like that. Or you could even select everything and uh, hit alt E and extrude face along normals like that. That will make these very sharp. Personally, I like to add a loop cut with shift R, turn the mean crease up to 0.5 and scale that in a little like that. And I know this is scaling downward, so I just have to lift it up very slightly. So when you have the ridge shape the way you want it, we can plug up these holes. So you can just select these like that and hit E to extrude, S, and then just hit zero like that. And it'll bring all of those points to the very center where we can just move them up like that. Hit M and merge by distance and you can see it re will remove some of the vertices. It's basically just merging these to one point. If we want, we can do the same thing up here, but I'm going to create a stem. So I'm just going to extrude that upward like that. Extrude, scale, shift Z. Extrude, Z. Extrude, scale, shift Z to bring that out. And I'm just going to close this off now with extrude, scale, shift Z, and then hit zero like that and we can just merge by distance again. And if you want this area to be sharp, you can just select these three and turn mean crease up like that. So the obvious downside is that it's kind of annoying when you want to change the width. You have to scale everything from the center. I'm sure you could tell there were a lot of hotkeys going on. It's, it's, it's not the most comfortable way to model for sure. But the pro is that whatever you do to one, it will happen to all of the ridges. So, you know, I could like bevel this vertex and extrude it and it will happen to every section like that every segment if for some reason you want to give your pumpkin a crown then you can do that <laughs> all right next we'll use curves so for this one we're going to need three different curves so i'll add in a path right here and i'm just going to move this around i'm going to hit control to enable snapping and we still have absolute grid snap so i know if i bring this up like that, um, I can snap it directly to the grid right there. And now our origin point is at the bottom because I did that all in edit mode. Now I can scale this down by 0.5 like that. I'm just gonna hit Control A and I'm gonna apply all transforms. So this is going to be the center of our pumpkin. I need to create another curve. I'm gonna create a Bezier curve right here. This is going to be like the tapered shape of our pumpkin. And then I'm going to create another curve. Our last curve is going to be a circle. So this is how we're going to create ridges. So to get started, you wanna select this center curve right here. Down under object data properties, you can see this little curve. You want to scroll down to geometry right here, and you wanna select the taper object. So I'm gonna use this eyedropper to select our Bezier curve right here. And for our bevel, we're going to use object right here and select our circle. You can see now that this is matching the shape of our curve right here. So if we went into edit mode and move this around, it's going to break a little. So don't rotate this around in edit mode. Make sure you do that 
pop in object mode right here. So I'm just going to rotate this until it's matching the shape of this, just so it's easier to, to see. So I think I have to rotate it on the Y axis and then on the Z axis, 90 degrees, negative 90 degrees. Actually, this is upside down. So I'll just rotate this on the X by 180. It's matching the shape. This is the profile. So now we can just hop in here and move these around until we get a pumpkin shape. The way I like to do that is select everything. You can right click. I'm just going to set the spline type to poly. It's just going to make the points sharp so you don't have any handles. So now we can just start moving these around. So I'm just going to select this point and E to extrude like this. And I want to make sure that the top and the bottom point are in line with each other like that. So once again, I did that by holding control and it's going to use snapping like that. And I have that set to increment and absolute grid. So as you're doing this, you can see that one of the obvious downsides is that you can't have any overhangs. When I do something like this, instead of going down and being a cone, it's just kind of either not having a face or it'll be flat like that. So that's just one thing we have to work with here. Now, when we have this the way we want it, we can just select everything, right click, set the spline type back to Bezier right here. And I'm going to set the handle type to automatic. And this will make everything smooth for us. So now we can just go through, select each one and rotate it however you want. Um, if you want it to be sharp, you can just select that single point and scale it down to zero. So I'm just gonna go through here and tweak some of the shapes. All right, so now you can see that this curve is being used for the profile, similar to the way we did the screw modifier. And now we can select this. This is going to be our bevel. And we can just kind of make this whatever shape we want. So the quick way to get ridges, you can just select everything, right click, subdivide. And I'm just gonna add five subdivisions down here. So you just wanna select one of these and then select all of them. You can see that this one is a different color. That's our active selection. Then you can go up to select and check or deselect. You can see now every other one is selected. And for this, hit period. Make sure you're uh, pivoting from the median point right here. And you can just scale them in. You can see as I do that, it's creating ridges in our pumpkin right there. So I'm going to scale that in very slightly. And then I'm going to hit period to switch this to individual origins right here. And this lets us just scale those handles individually. So if we scale that down to zero, you can see it'll create very sharp ridges like that, or we can just scale it down however much we want. So one obvious downside that I already mentioned, you can't have any of your taper object points having overhangs or else it just won't really work. You can see it's not really creating any dips in there. One upside is that this is very non-destructive, so we can even turn the resolution up if we want. Right now this is pretty low res. Um, you can see it's, set to 12. We can set this to something higher like 64 and immediately this gets a lot rounder. One other cool thing that you can do if you want to edit this from the outside. So you can come in here, just select whatever point you want. And I'm just going to search with F3 for hook and I'm going to choose hook to new object. You can see it'll create an empty for us. And when we go back into object mode, it'll let us move that around and it will uh, affect our curve like that. So I'm going to go in and create another one right here. So now you can rotate these around or move them around and affect your shape dynamically like that. You can even animate these empties to create some really weird effects. So next we're going to do poly modeling. And this is the way that I've always done it in the past. I'm going to get started with shift A and add in a circle right here. And I want this to have 36 vertices. Um, I like this because it's divisible by three. I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier with control three, and I'm just going to start modeling this in edit mode. So I'm going to scale this down, the center of our pumpkin right here. I'm going to extrude that down like that and scale it, extrude it up on the Z axis, extrude it and scale it inward a little. And I want that to go down a little too. I'm going to add a ridge in the center with control R and just scale that out. I'm going to select this ridge and bevel it with control B. I just want to, you can use your scroll wheel to create loop cuts, but I want to have no loop cuts to be about right here. I'm going to scale it out like that. All right. So before closing the top and the bottom, I'm just going to select one of these edges right here and I'm going to skip two and then select the third with shift and left click like that. And before doing anything else, you can hit 
control, shift, and plus. And that's basically going to repeat the selection. So you can see it just added another one right here. And we can just do that, control, shift, and plus on the numpad. We can just do that until it goes all the way around. Joey from the future here coming back to tell you I found out how to select multiple edge loops. So pretty much just like I showed you, select one of these. I'm going to skip two and select the third with shift left click like that. And then control shift plus on the numpad. That's just going to repeat the selection all the way around. And when you have all of these selected, you can actually just go up to select, select loops, edge loops like that. So you don't actually have to go through and individually select each one. So now that I have all of these selected, I'm going to hit N to open up the side panel, and I'm going to change the mean crease like I did before to 0.5 like that. And I want to make sure that I hit period, and then I'm using median point for this. And I'm just going to scale that in however much I want. And now we can close the top and the bottom off. So just to make this a little cleaner, I'm just going to select this loop right here with Alt and left click. I'm going to hit S to scale, Z, and then zero and this will flatten it out on the z-axis. I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom. Scale, z, zero, like that. And with the bottom selected, I'm going to hit Control F, and that's just going to bring up uh, this face menu right here. Control F, grid fill. And if that doesn't look how you want, change these around until it looks clean to you. So I think maybe this, and I'll rotate it around. That looks good. I'm just going to extrude and scale that in just a little more like that. And if we wanted, we could do the same thing for the top. But again, I'm going to create a little stem first. So to do that, I'm just going to turn the mean crease all the way up and then extrude up on the Z axis and then turn the mean crease all the way down. So this edge is smooth again. Extrude and scale that in slightly right here. Extrude upward. Extrude again. Scale it out. And I'm going to scale this part in and pull it down a little like that. Control F, grid fill, and you can just make this however you want. I'm just going to change the span and the offset until it looks good. And you can also enable simple blending and that will clean it up a little too. So the downside of this is it's also completely destructive. Uh, if you want to change anything, you just have to go in here and move stuff around. But it also gives you a lot of control, which I would say is the upside. And you can see when we shade this smooth, it's very clean. You know, if you're looking for something very simple, this is probably the method that you want to use. So last, we'll take a look at sculpting. So before we just start sculpting on a plain cube or something like that, I am going to create a base mesh. So I'm going to do some basic poly modeling for this. So one other thing is for this, instead of using the subdivision surface modifier, I'm going to delete that and add in a multi-resolution modifier like that. And to add subdivisions, you just hit the subdivide button. So I'm just going to add this until it gets smooth. Be careful. You don't want to add too many uh, subdivisions and crash your computer. So if it starts lagging, you might want to stop adding subdivisions. But I'm going to go up to, maybe I'll go up to six, okay? So now that we have this, we can just hop into sculpting mode. And you can just start sculpting and adding ridges. But instead of adding a bunch of ridges like that, we can enable radial symmetry. You want to make sure you're at active tool and workplace settings at the very top. Um, scroll down until you get to symmetry. And you can see we have radial right here. Um, basically, however many ridges you want, you can just type into here. So I'm going to hit 12 like that. And now you can see we have all these dots. And I can basically just make one ridge like that. But instead, I think I would like to use this crease right here. Look from the front. And for this, I'm using a mouse too. Uh, I do have a tablet, but I think this is easy enough so that you don't really need to use it if you don't want to. I'm just going to do this until I get a nice crease going. You can carry this to the bottom like that. So for the stem, I like to do something a little different and actually change this from 12 to 6, just because I think it looks better. You can change the size of your brush by hitting F like that. And if you want to smooth things out, you can hold a shift and then left click. And you can see it just kind of smooths like that. So I'll go back over to my crease brush right here. And just add some creasing. Okay, so the obvious benefit of using sculpting is that you get to use radial symmetry, like for real. You don't have to mess around with the array modifier. With the mirror modifier, you only get X, Y, and Z mirroring. In layout mode, you could turn the levels down in the viewport like this. So you'd be able to move it around and it looks low res, but you can always turn it back up like that. 
which is pretty nice. It's a cool feature. I would say the obvious downside is that not everybody likes to sculpt. So if you're not familiar with sculpting, this might seem a little harder to you. I'd say one of the other pros is that you can come in here with radial symmetry after you already made it to add imperfections. If you just go like this, now you have a, a lumpy pumpkin and it, you know, it might look a little more realistic. So yeah, if you ask me, I would say probably a combination of polymodeling and sculpting is the best option, but really the best one is the one that works for you, the one that you're comfortable with. All right, that's it for this one. Leave a comment to let me know which method is the best, or if you'd like to suggest a video topic. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.